There is a God in man. There is a God in every man. If every man can discover the God in them, they will behave like God on earth. Every man has been made a God on earth. It all depends on the ability of every man to discover the God in them. Discover the God in you. Because there is a God in you. There is a power in you. Who then is this God that is present in every man? In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Now let's pick it from verse 1. Quickly, display it for me. Genesis chapter 1. From verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. In verse 2, he says, The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There is a Spirit that is moving upon the face of the waters. And that was a mystery. Spirit moving upon the face of the waters. The waters represent nations. It represents all manners of men, all kinds of men. Nations and all kinds of tribes. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of nations. And the Spirit is still moving upon the face of nations up to this day. The Spirit of God is present in every believer. If you are a believer, you have the Spirit of God in you. And that is the God in you. In 1 Samuel chapter 10 verses, 1 Samuel chapter 10 verses, and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. The Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you, and you shall prophesy among them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. So there is a spirit that transforms every man into another man. That means the man you're supposed to be is not the man you are right now. If the Spirit of the Lord is not in you, the man you're supposed to be is not the man you are. You can only become the man you're supposed to be the moment the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you. And we can see this in 1 Samuel. Chapter 10, verse 6. In 1 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 6, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Saul, and he was turned into another man for his generation. For you to be relevant, in your generation, you need the Spirit of the Lord. You need the Spirit that can turn you into another man so that you will become productive for your generation.
In first Samuel, yes, Akabala Kwata Katala. Let's speak in tongue in, for just a minute. La brako sakatala bwa shakatala. Le breke to shakatala bala. Le beke toshi. Rakatata ipa twa katala bala kiakata. La kato shakatala bala. Thank you, Lord. In Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty, liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. That was a prophecy concerning the Lord Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And the moment the Spirit came upon Jesus, he received the anointing. By virtue of the anointer, the Holy Spirit was the anointer. That anoint Jesus for his ministry. We see this in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he declared his manifesto, and immediately manifestation follows. There is a power within you that can make you declare your manifesto and make you to fulfill your manifestation. Manifestations are proofs of manifestos. Manifestations are proofs of manifestos. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jesus and he immediately he preached good tidings to the meek. He bind up the brokenhearted, share up the brokenhearted, heal the wound of the brokenhearted. Proclaim liberty to the captive and open the prison door to those that are in prison and those that are bound and make the year acceptable unto the Lord. He proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He make the year acceptable to God the Father and to humanity and he comforts the people. The moment the Spirit comes upon you, the moment you discover the God in you, then you begin to manifest supernatural manifestation. So there is a Spirit that provokes supernatural manifestation. That is the Spirit of the Lord God. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 20, quickly, Matthew Chapter 10, verse 20. Yes, Lord. Matthew chapter 10, verse 20. It says, For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father, which speaketh in you. That was Jesus speaking to his disciples. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father, which speaketh in you. It is not you that is doing it. It is the Spirit of the Father that gives unto you the power of oratory prowess. So there is a Spirit that guarantees good oration. You can only become a wonderful and impactful orator by engaging the power of the Spirit. The Spirit of the Father is the God in you. The moment you carry the Spirit, your words carry power. The moment you carry the Spirit, your words carry power. Your words carry power. And your word carry a word. Your words carry power. And your word carries a word. 
the Spirit of the Lord add value and add virtue to humanity. If you can discover the God in you, you will begin to manifest the value and the virtue of your Maker in you. This virtue and value has been deposited in you right from creation. You receive it too by virtue of recreation. But the moment you discover the spirit in you, the virtue and value in you will find full expression in your world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11, say, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. So the spirit of God knows the things of God. The spirit of God knows the things of God. If you want to know the things of God, you need the Spirit of God to assess the mind of God. The Spirit of God communicates you with the mind of God. It connects your spirit with the mind of God so that you can know the will of God part time for your life. It is high time for you to discover the power in you. If you can discover this power, if you can discover this power, you will put an end to the age-long problem in your generation. If you can discover it, you will behave like Moses on it. You will be a Moses, another Moses for your generation, and another Jesus for your generation. If you can discover the power of God in you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3. It says, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshly tables of the earth. That means the God in you writes upon the tables of your heart the epist epistles of God. What are the epistles of God? The revelations of God per time are written in your heart by the Spirit of the Lord. That means the Spirit of the living God is the spiritual pen of the church. The Spirit of the Living God is the spiritual pen of the church. And the art of the man, the art of the man is the spiritual book in the realm of the Spirit. The pen of the Holy Ghost writes continuously upon the book of your heart, the revelation of the Lord Jesus. And you need this revelation to do exploit in life. For every revelation release, there is a great impartation. For every revelation release, there is a great revolution. All you need to effect a revolution in your generation is a revelation. And the key to this revelation knowledge is the pen of the Holy Spirit resident in you. In Romans chapter 8 verse 11, Romans chapter 8 verse 11, it says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So the spirit that is in you raised up Jesus from the dead. So if the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead can dwell in you, you will be quickened 
right from your inner man to your outer man. He says, He shall quicken your mother body. Although the spirit is in your spirit, it is connected to your spirit, but from the inside of you, the spirit shall quicken your mortal bodies. And the moment your mortal bodies are quickened, you receive supernatural healing. It is impossible for you to carry the spirit and be sick. Get this. It is impossible for you to carry the spirit of God and be sick. He says, The spirit shall quicken your mortal body. If a spirit can raise the dead, if a spirit can raise the dead Jesus, the spirit can do anything for you. And the spirit can do everything for you. So, all you need to raise every dead thing in your life. Is the spirit of God. All you need to raise your dead business is the spirit of God. All you need to raise your dead marriage is the spirit of God. All you need to raise your dead education is the spirit of God. You just engage the spirit, and that dead thing will yank back to life. Engage the spirit of God, and that dead thing in your life shall jack back to life. How powerful it is, the spirit in you. If you know the power of that spirit in you, you will give glory to your God. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, let us read this together. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Thank you, brother. Display it, Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is the seal upon you. Write that down. Write it, please. The Holy Spirit is the seal. What does it mean to place a seal? The seal means security. You have been sealed until the day, until the day of resurrection, until the day of rapture. The day of rapture marks the perfection of our redemption. It marks the completion of our redemption. The resurrection and rapture is the launching pad into the realm of eternal redemption. But as long as you live on this earth, you have been sealed. You have the seal upon you already. And the seal is your security on this earth. You cannot lose your salvation if you have this seal. You cannot lose your salvation if you have this seal. Because the Holy Spirit is the testimony. The Holy Spirit is your testimony that you have received the salvation of the Lord Jesus. Please, finally, please, open to Psalm 51. Psalm 51 verse 11, quickly, please. Psalm 51, yes, Lord. Psalm 51 verse 11. Psalm 51 verse 11. It says, David said, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. In verse 10, let's look at verse 10. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. In verse 11, he now said, Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. That was in the old dispensation. In the old dispensation, the Holy Spirit comes upon people. In the old dispensation, the Holy Spirit came upon people. The Holy Spirit does not dwell in people. Unlike the new dispensation, the Holy Spirit is resident in you. You cannot lose the Holy Spirit and you cannot lose the presence of God. 
because the Holy Spirit carries the presence of God. The moment you discover the God in you, the presence of God begins to saturate your destiny. Because the God in you is the presence of God. The presence of God you are looking for is in you. Every believer is a carrier of divine presence. Every believer 